What's up YouTube? I'm Sam with Generation Reptile. Today we're going to be talking about finding the perfect snake for you. Why? Seven foot boa constrictors and up may not be for everybody. So with that we're going to do a nice pro and con list for three different species of snakes that I keep here. And we'll start it off with number one which is this beautiful girl right here. This is Maggie. She came to me roughly a year and a half ago. A little overweight. Not too much on the like being handled bit, but you know what? We've worked with her, and as you can see, she is an absolute sweetheart now. We pull her out and play with her at least once or twice a week. So with that, let's start on to some negatives, I guess you could say, about owing, owning a boa constrictor. One is just their sheer size. I mean, she's far from being a giant, but... Believe it or not, she is still a very, very powerful animal. I mean, you can see she's got she got some girth on her. You know, and she's not even done growing. Uh, there have been on multiple occasions where you will see common boa constrictors, just like her, that have reached up to 13 feet in length and over 50 pounds. That's, that's a pretty big snake for most people to try and take on by themselves. We actually have a few rules we implement in that case when you do consider getting snakes that big. Rule number one, never handle them alone. Always make sure you have somebody else in because you never know what's going to happen. The snake can have a bad day. You can make a simple mistake and not even wash your hands and smell like a rat because you were feeding somebody over here and they can mistake you for food and again just have a bad day. It does happen. Uh, other downside to them is you're going to have to think about their enclosure. These are not smaller species that I've seen tons of people that go out by 75 gallon tanks, you know, or 40 gallon tanks, and they try and keep these snakes in them their whole life. That does not work for her. She is clearly too big for that. She is currently residing in a six and a half foot by two foot by two foot enclosure. And come this spring, we're actually going to do a DUI video on building a proper sized enclosure for her because we want to get her into an 8 foot by 3 foot by 3 foot. We always want to make sure we leave just a little height in there just so we can put some sticks and stuff in there and give her room to climb while she is a heavy girl and does not spend a lot of time up there. She will use the branches if we give them to her. Uh, so other downside you have to consider would be food. These are not snakes that are uh, going to shy away from food. They will eat pretty much anything and everything. They're dump trucks. They just love to eat. We feed Maggie, on average, I would say, the majority of her diet is jumbo rats. But every once in a while, I will incorporate something like a rabbit or a chicken that I've come in possession of for her. A little vari variation in her diet. Always good. Uh, and feeding schedule. Every two to three weeks, I will feed her usually a large jumbo rat. Again, I do try and base it more on the size of the animal that we've presented to her and, you know, how much of a girth did she gain after that. Uh, if we feed her a rabbit, it's about six to eight weeks between meals. Uh, you do not want to feed your large snakes just rabbits. That's I've had some issues before with some of the other large snakes when I was first learning, feeding them too many rabbits. Uh, they put on a lot of weight really fast, so make sure you learn how to properly feed and guess what you need to be feeding your reptiles. I usually try and find the thickest part, and we don't really want to exceed that by a whole lot. A little bit, yeah. Uh, other downsides that we have to consider is... She needs a nice sized water receptacle. We try and make sure all our reptiles have a water receptacle that they are completely capable of submerging themselves in if they want. It helps with shedding, or sometimes they just like to go for a swim like us. Um, oh, getting heavy, girl. With uh, other things to consider when it comes to reptiles of this stature, is just. Without even trying, these reptiles are more than capable of hurting you. Like her, when you have her up in the air, you're holding her, she's got a good chunk of her tail wrapped around something. It's, And she'll squeeze. And all that is is just her little security blanket. It makes her feel safe while she's up off the ground. Something to hold on to. But there are some pros to these guys. First of all, 
This is a snake that I don't have to worry about her being injured if I'm handling her, letting one of my friends potentially, because I do have friends that will come over and they want to learn about the reptile. So, and she's usually one of my favorite ones to start with just because she has such a nice calm deposition about her. And I mean, with her size, I can assure you they are not going to be able to hurt her. Plus, you know, I just like the big reptiles. The bigger, the better. I love them. But they're not for everybody. Uh, care requirements. They love their humidity. I try and keep her humidity at a minimum 60%. I keep the inside of her enclosure. One side stays about 85 and the other side will drop down to 75 with a nighttime fluctuation where they kind of like shut everything down somewhat and let the whole tank itself cool down to room temp. And the room temp itself usually stays 75 at night and during the day when I have everything up and running, it is about 84 degrees in this room. Wonderful. We keep a humidifier going actually in the corner of the room at all time. Helps keep the humidity up for all the enclosures. But they all get misted, including her. Every other day we mist them down, check their water, clean poops, etc. And that's another downside. These girls, uh, at this size, they start dropping some bombs, people. And they, uh, they don't smell very well. So if you have a weak stomach, I would uh, consider a lot of that. So with that, we're actually going to set her aside. I would love to go into more details, but due to some time restraints, we are going to have to cut her short. And just to let you guys see, this is all of Maggie. Again, we love this girl. She's the queen of the uh, reptile room, and she knows it. So we're going to set her down here in a little travel bin for now. And we're going to move on to number two. So this, this is Nessie. She is the a ball python, normal phase, nothing, no morph, no nothing. And she's a full grown female ball python, approximately five years in age. And we'll do pros and cons. Uh, cons, again, back to feeding them rats. Again, I'm very well aware that's not for everybody and that's fine. There are other snakes for that that'll eat fish and worms and frogs, and we'll get to those in another video. Today we're kind of covering some of the more popular ones I seem to come across in people's feeds. And ball pythons are pretty much the number one pet snake on the planet. Why? I mean, just look at them. It's still a girthy snake that you can have as a pet, you can handle it, and you don't have to worry about injuring it but they stay a much smaller, more manageable size. I actually have a large collection. Uh, she's one of the only normals in here. I have four normals in my collection. Two of them are hets that will be used for breeding projects later on. Uh, she's actually the second biggest out of all my ball pythons. My number one biggest is a Super Mojave. Unfortunately, she is actually getting ready to lay eggs soon, so we won't have her on camera. But anyway, back to the pro and cons. Again, con, feeding them rats. Another con that I know bothers a lot of people, especially if this is your first snake you get, is these guys are notorious for going off feed. They will just, they'll eat, and then one day they'll just decide, you know what, I'm not hungry for the next couple of months. Try having fun guessing when I'm ready to eat again. And she's actually herself started recently refusing food. It is, again, it's normal. There's no need to freak out as long as your snake keeps a nice good girth to them. They're not losing a ton of weight and seem healthy. You're, you're fine. It is normal. There are people that I've talked to that have had their ball pythons go on food strikes for up to six months and they're perfectly fine. Another con that comes with this, if you're doing frozen thawed, which I highly recommend you do that over live. We'll get to that in a minute. 
you're wasting a rat, unfortunately, every time you feed them. I thaw one out, I get it up to temp, I present it, and she just doesn't want it for whatever reason. Unfortunately, I'm losing money on that rat. You can't refreeze them and try again later. It doesn't work like that. Nobody likes leftovers. Well, at least the, these guys don't. Uh, and, like, you know, it, another downside I would say to these guys is... Uh, actually, I can't really think of another downside to these guys. They're just awesome. I love them. So this, uh, like I said, is a typical, just a normal face female. Nothing special. I mean, I take that back. She is special. We love her. But um, as you can see, I'm perfectly comfortable wearing her around my neck. I'm not super worried like I was when we had Maggie. I tried to make sure I kept her open in the front. Just because while she may not intentionally hurt me, she could very easily just because of how strong of an animal she actually is. This... I mean, she'll never do, she she's not capable of injuring me in any way, shape, or form, other than maybe drawing a little blood if she bit me. But that is one thing you will have to be willing to tolerate if you wish to keep snakes as a pet. Uh, and like I said, go another. Well, we'll start with pros. Pros, I mean, they're beautiful. They're a wonderful size. They're not big. They're not, but they're still impressive. They are very impressive, even though they're not giants. And, you know, they're not fragile. Uh, other pros I would say to them is just they are everywhere. They're easy to find in all kinds of colors and patterns. I mean, I have quite a few. We keep pinstripes. We keep spinners. We have super Mojaves, albinos, uh, pies. We have a pie male who's actually just getting ready to come into size for breeding season next year. And this is actually one of the girls we plan to pair him with, just so we can make some hats for future projects. And as you can see, they have wonderful temperaments. Very gentle, very relaxed, as long as you do regular handling. I try and socialize each and every one of my ball pythons at least twice a week, for at least 15 to 20 minutes. And that's kind of it. Um, basic care requirements. When they're little, you can keep them in plastic tubs, which I do that with some of my babies we have growing up there. When they get bigger, though, I mean, again, you can keep them in tubs if you get a rack system. That's pretty common. I see tons of people that do that, and there's nothing wrong with that, in my opinion, at all. These aren't like other snakes. They don't require UVB or anything like that. They just like it warm. They like their humidity. I try around 70% is what I try and aim for just makes it shedding easier they seem to stay more active and take feet a lot easier as long as you meet everything she currently resides in a four by two by two again we do plan on upsizing her soon and let's see care requirements we use a natural like reptabark kind of substrate mixed with some cocoa fibers for her it's great for holding humidity and keeping it damp but not super wet her enclosure also consists of two hides, foliage, and a large water receptacle, again, like with the boa. We make sure that all of our snakes, especially, have large enough receptacles that if they wish to, they can crawl in there. Just as a little something extra when they get ready to shed, that moisture goes a long way with them. Uh, one side of the aquarium is always at 85, the other side stays right around 77, and there's a hide on both the hot side and the cold side just to give her that option with plenty of foliage in between to allow her to move around freely without being seen. That's what she wants. Again, like the boa, these guys are not really known to be tree climbers, but we do offer them the option and we have on a, plenty of occasions caught her up climbing around, enjoying herself. Uh, feeding, same as the boa, find the girthiest part of the snake and you're trying to match a rat roughly the same size as this, maybe a little bit bigger, that's fine. And once they reach full adulthood size, like her, I put them on a every two week feeding schedule. When they're babies, like some of the juveniles I have up there, I try and feed them about every six or seven days, sometimes a little sooner. But as they get, you, you'll see that a lot of these snakes, as you keep them, the older they get, the bigger they get, their growth rate slows down, so you don't have to feed them as frequently, which is another thing. I see a lot of fat ball pythons just because people overfeed them. Once every two weeks, 
match the girth, and they're fine. That's all you gotta do. Uh, and like I said, they are known to go off feed, so if they do, don't freak out. That's perfectly normal. They can do this for months, if not, I think up to a year is the longest I've heard of. Most of mine, on average, will do it for two or three months, and then they're fine. Like I said, she just recently went off feed, which is normal for her. We're not super worried. She's still big and chunky. You wouldn't believe it's been almost a month and a half since her last meal. I do try and offer it, though. Uh, once I think they've hit that point where they are going off feed, I try and at least offer them one every three weeks versus two, just, just so I'm not burning through rats as frequently. Um... We do want to upsize her. I'd like to have her in a nice at least six foot by two foot by two foot, similar to the boa, even though she's a lot smaller, just because, believe it or not, these guys will definitely use the space. As you can see, she loves to explore, crawl around. She's a very active animal. And with that, we're going to set her aside, and I'll bring out my last snake for the day. So give me one moment, please. So for our last snake for the day, we have Clyde. Clyde is a MBK Mexican Black King snake. Uh, he is a juvenile. We don't have any adults. He's a new project we've recently decided to get into. And we love him, first of all. Beautiful snake. I really wish the camera would do him justice. So when it comes to cons, I really can't think of a whole lot of cons with these guys. They're not going to get gigantic. I really wish I did have an adult to show you, but on average about four foot and maybe, I don't know, three, four inch of girth. I mean, they're not, they're not very big snakes. I mean, four inches I feel is pushing it kind of, but he's a, I said, cons, I can't think of it. They have, they're not hard to care for. They're very simple. Uh, thanks to consider though I guess with the con is like the ball pythons you can leave them in the racking system and they're fine he on the other hand does require a basking light these guys love their UVB so that is a requirement you're going to have for them uh, other things to consider no that's, that's about it uh, pros I would say well, they're colubrids. They're actually found here in North America, Arizona, New Mexico, some parts of Texas, lower parts of California, I believe, and Mexico. So they are a native species. They're getting to be pretty popular. I'm seeing them more and more often in a lot of the expos I go to, which is nice. They're not terribly expensive, but I think we paid 175 for him. And care setup. Uh, right now, as a young juvenile, we're keeping him in a 15-gallon setup. He has a mixture of sand and, again, cocoa husk that we have, uh, or fibers that we have spread in this tank. These guys are uh, pretty much a desert-dwelling species, so their humidity doesn't have to be crazy. We do keep a humidity box in his enclosure for him just to assist with shedding, which he recently did. And feeding him at this size, we're pretty much just feeding him pinky mice. He's not really big enough to take on anything else yet. But we do plan on getting a girlfriend for him so we can grow them up together and start trying to breed our own. I think he's an absolutely beautiful snake. Uh, I'd say four feet, I'd say three inch girth sounds better. I mean, they're, they're not huge. They don't get big. Uh, unlike other, a lot of the other snakes I deal with, I have got ball pythons that love to bite. I mean, I have one, does not matter. She's determined to bite you every time she sees you. Him, he doesn't really bite. He more or less just musk, which is just like this smelly fluid that they secrete from their cloaca. And the cloaca, for those of you who don't know, is kind of like the snake's... It's, it's just where everything comes out. That's It's kind of one and done with everything for him. 
But uh, yeah, he's more likely to musk than he is to bite. He's not musking on me, again, because we do regular handling sessions. We are working on calming him down. And again, very nice active snake. These guys are great, by the way, if you have an enclosure you want to set up somewhere to view. They're active during the day. As long as you give them, like, we keep sticks, we keep some vines, hides, all kinds of stuff in this tank. He's got tons of room to move. And while, again, they're not known to be climbers, they're perfectly capable climbers. So we give him all the advantages that he wants to move around and explore. We keep a small water dish for him. He's got two hides plus tons of foliage he can crawl under and enjoy. So I, I, I really, really can't think of a whole lot of negatives when it comes to these guys. I said he's actually, we keep him in the reptile room. And again, I don't add a whole lot of extra heat source. He just has his little, whoop, has his uh, UVB light for basking. And that's kind of like it. We don't have to do a whole lot just because of how nice and steady the room temp is. Um, I said uh, he's approximately, I believe, four months old right now, maybe five. They do grow kind of rapid their first year, but then they'll slow down and you can reduce feedings. He actually right now gets fed at Tinky Mice about every five to six days is the schedule we're keeping him on. You know, and again, I know mice, rats, people don't like doing that. They're cute. And I get that. That's They're not for everybody. And like I said, we will have a video coming on snakes you can keep that, well, you don't have to feed rats to. But for right now, this is kind of it. So let me know your opinion.